Well guys, just got home. Rumor has it that uh, these little guys might have laid some eggs, so I'm gonna go check it out. <laughs> we got a few eggs. Nice. Those must be the ducks, because those are pretty big. So we'd put in a few of the fake eggs in just to kind of encourage the chickens to get going and then I had put a, a fake one down here for the ducks and they had kind of started laying on it right there but it looks like it might have encouraged them enough and they started here and get those pulled out. <laughs> yep, way too big to be chicken eggs especially right out of the gate here so we're gonna try duck eggs for the first time. I kind of drew myself just a rough idea of what I'm doing. I'm starting to set out uh, some measurements here. Basically what I'm doing is finding center and then going out two inches. We're gonna have a two inch tongue here. Uh, and then the uh, post will uh, have two inch ears that uh, slip over that. We'll also be uh, probably an inch, inch and a half maybe in right here that the uh, post, or the, I'm sorry, that the uh, beam will actually sit down on the shoulder here. So just kind of sorting things out for what I want to do and, and getting it marked and ready to cut. Got my tongues all laid out. I'm simply going to use the sawzall to cut them out. Should be pretty straightforward. Well guys, got the uh, tongues roughed out on the posts. Left them a little bit long for now um, until I get the exact final height on uh, on my beams once I get them up and in. So I'm going to go ahead and start planing on the beams here. We'll get those planed down uh, and get them uh, probably up and supported in so I can determine my final height on that. So we're simply using a Harbor Freight uh, handheld planer here. It's not a quality planer by any means. Um, it hasn't died yet though and that's what I'm most concerned about so um, it planed our uh, beam for the center post for the stairs uh, it's planed all these and we're gonna get two more planed with it um, we just got to kind of keep the chute clear and then every so often uh, uh, clean up the air intake there so uh, it's holding together so far if I was doing a, a ton more planing uh, I'd get a, a better one but uh, you know, for, for a little bit here, a little bit there, I don't use a handheld planer that often. Um, so, it works. So my slab cuts were pretty flat, pretty square. Um, but my uh, mini mill cuts down the sides were, were a little rough. So, um, I'm kind of squaring, uh, I squared this side first. And then I'm just uh, making sure this is still nice and flat. And then I'll, I'll square the other side as well. Just kind of work my way around squaring all the edges so we're, you know, Roughly a, a shape resembling a square. I need to cut a small detail in a here all the way up and so I've cut from this side with the skill saw down as far as I can go uh, but I'm gonna have to chisel this out so I'm basically just cutting a bunch of lines I'll keep working my way down and then I'll come back and cut out on this side
Well, in typical fashion, I don't have the correct tools to do the job here. I don't have any timber framing slicks or anything like that. So uh, cutting this profile, I'm doing something that uh, is kind of unconventional, but. So what I have here is actually, I don't know what you'd call that. It's like a hewing ax of some sort, um, flat on the one side which is perfect for what we're doing here. We're trying to come in along the flat backside and chip out. So I know, don't scream at me, but I am beating on this with my hammer <laughs> and using this basically as a, as a giant chisel. So worked pretty good on cutting out our first detail here because uh, my skill saw only would go down, you know, about two and a half ish maybe two and a quarter and we need to go down two and three quarters so worked pretty good there I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, chipping out and cutting out the rest of this detail here So that was a very easy uh, chip job to uh, get down, bust off our fir first piece that we cut with the skill saw. And now I'll start just working down long. I know this is a flat edge, so I'll lay the flat edge of our axe right here and just work it down. Uh, and I've got relief cuts cutting all these and I'll work down to my mark right here. So I'm just working on my way down here. I was thinking, I have a roto hammer, and if I had a wide chisel blade, man, that would make it really nice for hogging out big chunks of this at, at a time, but uh, all I have is a short little uh, little chisel. Huh, maybe next time, if I do this again <laughs> with some big beams, that would make quick work of this, I think. All right, I gotta know. I don't have the right stuff for this, but I gotta find out. My curiosity is getting the better of me. So we use this in our uh, in our foundation. One side has these ridges to push and bust apart, and the other side, um, it just has indents right there. Yeah, let's give it a shot and see. I don't know if it'll work, but I, on the other side, I have a uh, just a valley to cut, a U shape. So that might work for chiseling out the center. So that's working pretty good at just chipping everything out of the way except for where there's a knot and instead of cutting it's kind of chiseling out that knot as you can see right there no big deal this is all faux hidden behind anyways so that's all right but working pretty good for cutting through all those layers So this is actually what you're gonna see right here is the underside of the beam, the side of the beam, and then you'll see uh, that one inch piece on the other side. So uh, we're in good shape, but everything looks good here. All right, so we have roughly a 10 foot beam and uh, we have about seven inches left there. And uh, the double seal is partially down below the ceiling there. So we've got about two and three quarters depth cut into this. Um, so about seven inches remaining 
and there'll be a cross brace going down to the post there to take uh, that chunk of the load and there'll be a cross brace over here to take this chunk of the load as well so the actual span's only going to be maybe maybe five foot the most you've been a good helper seller no no you're not really are you oh i didn't mean it so i'm just marking out my uh my tenons here and or i guess my mortise sorry I can never remember which one's which. Anyhow, marking out my slot here <laughs> for my tongue. So these tongues are about four and a half inches, and uh, we've calculated for an inch uh, of overhang uh, where the post will be, or I'm sorry, the beam will be supported there, and then uh, be received uh, by the, the tongue here. So uh, I'm giving myself a, a little bit of wiggle room. Um, it's not like I'm doing a uh, uh, some sort of crazy timber frame cabin or anything. Just needs to fit up there. It's going to be fastened. Uh, the, the posts are going to be fastened at the floor and the ceiling. And uh, we just need them to hold up and support our beam. And then, of course, we'll have some cross bracing uh, to help support everything. I'm doing timber framing in the cabin, but it's not a timber frame cabin. about to lose light here we had uh, daylight savings uh, oh, a week or two ago and it's getting dark it's about five o'clock and uh, it's cold outside as you can see there's frost behind me on the ground um, it's getting cold already so I've got to get this uh, project finished up we're getting a lot of dew in the evening so I've been uh, tarping these uh, uh, posts and beams so we don't get them uh, all warped and, and twisted but this uh, this beam is all ready to go I got the mortises done on it, so uh, it's ready to go. I can start on the other one. That's a simple U-channel, or relatively simple U-channel down it. So, um, making some headway here. We'll get this uh, get this in the cabin here in the next uh, week or so. Get this thing finished up and uh, and put to bed. Thanks for coming along, guys.